when I when I worked at the liquor store, everybody would see my hands and they'd be like, "Oh, you're a mechanic." I'm like, no, no, I'm not. Kinda, quasi. Uh, I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. How about that? Uh, I can I can gorilla weld. Uh, I can I can turn I can turn a wrench or two. Uh, but I'm 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 not a mechanic. At least I'm not a good mechanic. How about that? I can make shit work, but that's about it. It's, it's just it's funny, man. The the shit that ends up. I mean, my hands are so fucked. They'll never look normal for the rest of my life. It doesn't help that I chew on my cuticles so bad. It's like a, you know, when your anxiety rides between a nine out of ten and an eleven out of ten, it's uh, you know, you gotta you gotta chew on shit. And so normally I either have like a dip in my mouth or I'm chewing on my nails or. I wonder how many milligrams, I bet my milligrams of nicotine consumption per day is what most people consume in caffeine a day. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. I know. I know. It's not, it's not good. I need to tone that back, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I think I some, so much better. Uh, so much no better without it. No Busy, stimulants. did you just ask me if I've tried Cougar Wintergreen? Are you kidding me? What kind of ridiculous ass question is that? <laughs> I will fight you, Busy. That is my, that is my shit. Because you know why? <laughs> because Cougar is now two dollars and forty nine cents per ten, per ten. You can get a whole sleeve. You can get a five roll sleeve now for eleven dollars. That used to be what Grizzly cost. Now Grizzly is five dollars a can. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. It's uh. Oh, we, we are live now. So I. So I just talked right right through all of this. Um, <laughs> you're good. I just I, gave I up. A, I, I just went live. Good. Good. I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad you did because I was not going to stop talking. Well, yeah, with, with uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm so offended, Busy. Like, how dare you ask me such a question? Of course. <laughs> do you, do you know, do you know why? Do you know where Cougar comes from? It's, uh, it, it comes from Memphis, my guy. It comes from Memphis. So of course I have to, I got to represent my hometown. What's up to all my Memphis family <laughs> that's watching right now? Uh, my name is Matt. Sometimes I go by the grass factor alongside me. We have Ryan DeMay and Ray Ito. Gentlemen, how the hell are y'all doing? How was y'all's week? this week we haven't talked since sunday when we recorded uh how's it been everything going good yeah it's busy it's busy yeah. as fuck right now but it's good yeah can't, can't <laughs> complain yeah it's the good. season can't is complain. in full swing <laughs> yeah i mean I, 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 there's no doubt about it i saw a uh ah oh, i've seen kind of a, a probably a 250 mile swath of latitudes here in the last like two weeks and it's pretty crazy like i was up in mid michigan uh this past week and i've been you know down to like kentucky area um week before and just the difference right now and how things are moving and shaking and everything like that it's it's kind of crazy so people out there getting it done grass is starting to green up little by little here and i don't know ray what's hawaii like right now well can't make up its mind it's raining or it's windy and it's still not warm enough for the damn zoysia to really grow. Damn zoysia. That damn zoysia. Yeah, it's it's really Never not warm. But to. then I I have zero complaints about the Bermuda. I have zero complaints because you see Bermuda doesn't puss out on me between <laughs> December through April. Bermuda does not do that weak sauce stuff on me. It keeps on chooching. I love Bermuda. You got to have some harsher conversations with your, with your Zoysia properties. I think, I think that's what we have found out. Ray, (laughs) you talk about the Zoysia. You're not talking to the Zoysia. I think you need to have more one-on-one conversations actually (laughs) with the Zoysia. Listen to them. Let them explain everything that's going on, why they're being moody, and then you tell them to fucking grow out of it and get your shit together. It's go time. Hey, hey, Matt, why do you think that for me, 
I'm looking at a lot of these Zoisha loans and I'm thinking, hey, keep it up and you're a candidate for Roundup and Endurant. I'm See, done. No. See, <laughs> you, need to have the, you need to be on your hands and knees having that conversation with the threaten the grass. Don't think it. You get on your knees and you tell it. You tell it. You will get Endurant together. <laughs> and sure guard. Get your shit together. I don't know. I don't know. Or what, what was uh, what was what was uh, how to with Doc's thing? Uh, the green shocker, you know. It green. It it, it 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 gets green again. Otherwise, it gets the peen again. <laughs> that's what was, mm -hmm. that's what Ted. That's what Ted said. Or maybe he was talking to Bart. I don't know. I don't know. Ted is Ted is out there. I I'm. Sure, he was talking to his <laughs> housekeeper. I just, I couldn't, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. I feel, I feel disgusting. I need to take a shower. Uh, what are we the, doing? Uh, okay. This is Wet and Wild Wednesday. So this is the, uh, the compliment, the new date time, because our lives are in such shambles by Thursday evening. <laughs> Uh, I'm not lying. Like I'm, I'm being no. uh, brutally honest right now. That uh, <laughs> between uh, schedules, uh, mental bandwidth, and uh, <laughs> physical stamina, we are just not in good shape by Thursday night. <laughs> we do it on Wednesday because that's 24 hours better than Thursday. Um, yep. And uh, we're taking questions tonight. So, uh, as I said last week. And Matt wasn't here. Matt was uh, doing some extra work, right? Because again, <laughs> things are just in shambles. Uh, not bad and shambles. You know, the, yeah, the good, the good shambles. So, uh, what and wild Wednesday? We'll take questions here tonight. We'll uh, we'll probably have we have. I, so, one thing I wanted to bring up, gentlemen, uh, is that uh, our our good and loyal friend Aldo, who is actually on one of the original shows that was about three years ago. Was this one time. of the OGs. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, has was was gracious and kind, and uh, professed his love for Michael Woods on our Discord server, and kindly asked him to come <laughs> on the show. And I had forgotten that I had like invited him, but never really said like, "Hey, come on this date." So I think I've done. Push it over thing. to J Pink. J Pink is going to, uh, whether he knows it not or not, he knows now. <laughs> you just found out, J Pink. <laughs> I tell why well, I tagged him. I tagged, I tagged him on Discord. <laughs> It's on the tag. No, so so it worked. It worked. He'll reach out to him. We'll get uh, we'll get Michael Woods on here. He had a really good episode with Dr. Travis Shaddix. Uh, Shaddox, if you live in Flower Ridge, Georgia. That's how they pronounce mm -hmm. it down there with the regional, you know, regional dialect in Flowery Branch. Shaddox. And um, yeah, so trying to get uh, some good guests on, but we just like to kick it here and, and, and take some questions because, um, listen, gentlemen, there are... People who have already fucked up their lawn, and there are people who are on the verge <laughs> of doing so, and we're here to answer oh. all of those people's questions. I thought you were going to say life, and I was like, can I be oh, a poster boy? We, we can do... <laughs> listen, it, that man, wouldn't that be a, a great segment every week? Life advice from Matt, Ray, and Ryan. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You want to talk about like a dear uh, Eloise uh, uh, column? Jeez, we would, yeah. <laughs> we'd, we'd really bang one out here. Is it, oh, oh, you think you're about to fuck up your life? Here's your lessons from Matt, Ryan, mm. and Ray. Yeah. Yeah. Back yeah. in New 2006. How not, how not to with Ray? There, how not to? <laughs> I haven't figured that part out, Ray. Maybe, maybe and I need to listen to the, the first part of this. That was when I figured out that my cocaine scale was never teared. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Anyway, when kilos were ten thousand uh, dollars. Also, we we uh, we need to get uh, Renew Turf back on. Uh, he is know that training in, program. Yeah, 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 yeah. Training and hiring uh, craze right now um and anyway do that that too uh that too i just need to say that out loud before it escapes my brain um because i i am at 100 percent max capacity right now every time i hear something else something is leaving and so i know at some point that will be replaced so i need to say it out loud before i forget um what a cool thing uh, what a cool thing that i want to share real quick is uh 
Saturday, this past Saturday, we uh, we teased it. We did it for the folks that are members of uh, the Patreon. So again, www.patreon.com forward slash burn return. And uh, we had a, a power hour. I don't know if anybody actually drank any or vibed any alcohol, uh, but we had a uh, rather lengthy discussion. I know Ray was up much later than I was. I tapped out of it for about two and a half hours. One of the cool things we did, though, is we took uh, Kevin, some beach, is uh, he's been doing some lawns on the side here. He kind of put together a program for some more lawns as he's kind of dipping his toe deeper and deeper into the pool here. And he had us, um, you know, kind of take it apart a little bit on the agronomic side, but uh, even more so, kind of built uh, this calculator spreadsheet thing years ago and we kind of flushed it through that to you know figure out and pick up on what his costs you know were going to be obviously to him but also you know what to sell it for and how to kind of track all those profits on cogs and uh, labor and you know overhead things like that and try to understand you know where all the money was going so that was pretty cool little you know tangible thing that we did but we also had fun kicked it and talked about a, a wide range of subjects so uh, we'll do that again here soon. We'll do that maybe uh, next month in April and, uh, you know, turf life numbers, all that good stuff. And, uh, that's just one of the many benefits of, uh, of membership. So I digress there, but go ahead, Matt. No, I was, I was going to say that's great. And, uh, the, the reason, the reason why that's great is I, it is important to me at this point of, of my life is that, um, you know, for, for however many years, you know, talking on YouTube about the agronomy side of equal importance for the long-term success of your business is also the monetary side. Right. And, and again, I'm, please understand I am the, uh, I'm the, the kettle calling the pot, the pot calling the kettle black. Okay. I'm terrible at it. Right. That's why I have a business partner. And so but what I have been able to learn over the last six years is it, it literally took me six years of being inundated with it to start to figure it out. And so I, I stress, I know people want to hear the agronomy stuff. I know, and I promise we will cover it. But um, if, you, if you struggle with the, the monetary side of things or it's something that you keep burying, I promise this will be an opportunity for you to come on and talk about it because... Um, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you're not the only one going through this. So we actually had a, a, a lawn care guy stop by the office uh, this week. And he, he was talking about how full service uh, uh, guy, right? So does, uh, you know, maintenance and uh, installs and uh, Ferton Court. And one of the issues that he kept running into is that while he was on a property mowing, he gets asked to do additional work. He would write it down in a book and then he wouldn't invoice it until he had the next rain day. Well, sometimes that would be three weeks. And then by the time he sent out that invoice, the customer all of a sudden was complaining about the things that they had added every week. And now it had totaled mm -hmm. his costs and the customer couldn't cover it. And, and so we were specifically talking about uh, the, uh, the importance of getting invoices out immediately, immediately to eliminate so many of those headaches that, that can occur. And that's literally the difference between waiting seven days to issue an invoice and one day to issue an invoice or same day issue an invoice. And I get it. You're out in the field all day long and you get home and you're tired. And the last thing you want to do is open a laptop and then go cross-reference everything in your notebook that you wrote down. And so maybe talking about some different strategies that we can do either with CRM software or whatever else to, uh, to automate some of that. And I, and I think, I think at least from a, a basic standpoint, we can, we can help with some of that to get it added to your, uh, your work log while you're on the property and, uh, immediately built a credit card as you're, as you're leaving. And, and then there's no, there's no guesswork or whatever about it. There's no one that can come back after the fact and say, well, I didn't know it was going to be that much or, you know, well, I overcommitted more than what I can pay kind of sort of deal. Right. So <laughs> anyway, I think that's something that, especially in those that, that we can get knee deep in, because you may not want to put it out on the air and I hear you, I get it. But in that particular instance, I promise you're going to be around a bunch of guys that are going through the exact same fucking thing. I've been there too. And I don't want to say that I am uh, any better than anyone else at that at all. Uh, because I, it, I am not a hundred percent. I'm not 
why I like having a business partner is that I can be 10 minutes from finishing a project and JB is issuing an invoice to the customer before as, as I'm like turning everything off, I, I get the notification <laughs> that an invoice went out. It's, it's literally oh. that quick and not, not a minute later, not, uh, not uh, an hour later. It is, I mean, he smells the finish line and it's boom, gone. So anyway, <laughs> uh, I, it's, it's great. It's great. I like that. Anyway, we are taking questions tonight. Feel free to throw your questions in the chat. Be prepared. It is. Uh, it might take us a second to get to it because we're going to be answering questions in front of you. Uh, also, as the lawyers say, we are human. We are fallible. Fact check everything we say. I uh, do understand we do this live. Sometimes we misspeak. Sometimes we think we understand a question and we answer it wrong. Uh, sometimes we're just flat out lie, period, because we don't know any different. And uh, we think we're telling the truth. And, uh, you know, like sometimes I'll be recalling a memory off label, uh, a, a label off memory. And say, I just did it ass backwards. Did you see that? Did you catch that? I'd be recalling my memory off label. It doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. I'll be recalling a label off memory. And, uh, and I'm, I'm talking about three way, which is what I'm visualizing in my head, but I'm giving you statistics for, uh, you know, chlorothalonil rates or something. Right. So again, double check <laughs> everything we say, fact check it, please approach us with the same level of skepticism that you would anyone else. And I would, I do not want to be treated differently than anyone else. So again, please. Uh, put us through our paces as well. I promise it actually makes us better at what we do. Uh, that out of the way, uh, I guess we can uh, we can start getting to some of the questions that could come in. Uh, one of the first things that came in is Connecticut Cubanican, uh, which, by the way, we need to get him on too because I gotta I gotta grill this guy about his job. <clears throat> he's he's actually emailed in and he let us know that once the once he retires and the statute of limitations pass he will come on but not until then <laughs> so <laughs> we, we we understand yeah. that we appreciate that we're empathetic to that that plight and uh yep. we, yeah we we've all worked for the man and now we don't and uh, we can't wait to welcome you to our illustrious club <laughs> uh Ryan, on a previous show, Turf Therapy recommended the Jacto four-gallon battery sprayer. Uh, did you buy it since you were in the market for a sprayer at that time? Uh, if so, do you like it? If not, what did you buy? I want a four- to five-gallon battery sprayer and have my do on the Jacto. Yeah, so I did buy this uh, and got one of these and a flow zone. I like this one. It's fine. I mean, I haven't had any issues with it. Um, does everything that I needed to do. So I wish I could offer you more. I haven't done a whole lot with it. Um, mostly uh, our folks that are running it. So, but I, I, the little bit that I have done with it, I thought, hey, it's pretty well built sprayer for 125 bucks. Not bad. Comes right to your door. You can pick it up in your underwear. You know, if you're into that kind of thing. I have no experience with it, so I can't uh, I can't say anything about it. But everyone I do know who has used it has always said they liked it. Uh, I've never heard one person say that they didn't like it. Um, some of the other ones that I know people like are uh, what is it, the Typhoon or whatever else? I can't remember the name Flozone, of the brand yeah. that makes that. Yeah, Flozo. I know people like those. Uh, I know people like the Jack those. And uh, so yeah, I'd say I'd say you're not going to go wrong uh, in in uh, with with the Jack though for sure. <laughs> Uh, Pro Turf, sir, has said, have you ever considered going on the Mike Rowe podcast? I haven't. I probably should. Uh, <laughs> mm. I don't. I don't think he would have me on. But if he would, let me tell you, I am a huge fan of Mike Rowe. I don't know if too many people know this, but he used to be on QVC in the middle of the night. And yep. Mike Rowe in the middle of the night, QVC Mike Rowe was one of the funniest comedians I had ever heard in my entire life. Because I was a psychopathic kid, was am, uh, I I used to watch a lot of really strange TV at, at night. Uh, we didn't we, we didn't watch a lot of TV in my house. Period. Right. It just it was not it was not a thing. If we did, we sat down, and I I'd tell the story that you know one of the first movies I saw as a as a family was Full Metal Jacket, and I was you know like eight years old or whatever, and uh, it was Fun. it was an experience. Um, but uh so anyway i was like really into watching the weather channel and i would watch the weather channel for hours you know from like midnight till 2 a.m or i would watch qvc and uh and anyway mike rowe is one of the funniest human beings on earth uh back back at that time still is it still is incredibly funny so i would fangirl so hard in that instance it would be 
it, it would be difficult. But in terms of dirty jobs, I would say granulation is depending on the type of materials that you granulate, right? When you're when you're granulating a lot of waste streams like I do, yes, they are incredibly messy. Um, and some of it depends on the moisture content too, you know, like if you're working with dried distillers grains, that is an absolute nightmare of material because there's some soluble content and it gums up and then it turns into a rock, doesn't flow well. It's awful. Absolutely awful. Um, some really dry activated carbons are just absolutely awful. Any kind of ash is absolutely awful. Um, if it's finer than hundred micron, you can you can pretty much and dry. You can bet your ass that it is one of the worst experiences you'll have. Uh, it's, it just it embeds in your skin. It's it's terrible. I, it's not fun, <laughs> but uh, it's it's pretty satisfying on the back end. Uh, Brian Morales is on vacation. Kids are in the pool and he's smoking a cigar, watching the best show on earth. Kudos to you, sir. I am jealous. Um, I am I am really really jealous. Jeez. Uh, Tiff Grand is still dormant in Columbia, South Carolina. I'm honestly not surprised. Uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah. We, we just had our Bradford pairs bust out. And normally our Bradford pairs are busting out mid-February. So we're a full month behind. Right now, typically, cherries are done blooming. And uh, I just started seeing cherries pop out today. Uh, I saw the Bradford pears start last weekend. So we are a full month behind in terms of weather. How are y'all? Are y'all seeing similar things? Like, I you think you're on pace or are you behind? Well, I think we're a little ahead here. It's been a little bit warmer than it has been typically. Real cold this week. Uh, but overall, I think we're ahead. I think the one thing, though, and we can talk more about it later or whatever but i think we saw because that temperature ramped up people were freaking out about oh i gotta get my gotta get my pre-em out I've, uh, now it cooled off like that that window just got a little bit longer a little bit wider right so no need to freak out i just mm -hmm. i don't i never really understood the, the freak out uh on the on the pre-em i just what's the, what's the what's jay pink sold saying hey we'll fix it in post Big deal. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, Good I, you know, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> the the freak out on preem. I understood when I was in Memphis in Georgia because you didn't you didn't get just a ton of days of freezing uh, after January thirty one, right? Like you might get one or two more. So. You know, by the time March 31st rolls around, yeah, you're in you're in full fledged hustle season. Like it's you got to get everything done. At least your first round has to be done, right? But when you still have 29s and 23s and 27s in the forecast, shit, even some 32s uh, with a with a frost. I mean, is there really even a reason to freak out? No, no. So don't freak out. Man. Cool your jets. Cool your jets. You're not going to die. You're not. I promise. Uh, yeah, Brian is talking about Zoysia taking longer to get better there. It's rainy, windy, and just got a little chilly here again in South Florida. Actually, I talked to a guy in South Florida today. Well, not South Florida, but Stewart. Eh, I guess this is close enough. He said he uh, it was 56 degrees. It was 46 here. It was 56 there, and he was wearing a hoodie. And uh, I actually was, too. I was like, man, wow, you and I both. Aldo said, what cool season species do each of you think I should experiment with next fall? Perennial ryegrass and Kentucky bluegrass are checked off. Mm. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> bent. I would probably do bent grass. You're already real mowing the front. It is, it's a whole different animal. Um, it's angry. It will frustrate you. Um, You'll you'll get addicted to it, like like free base cocaine and uh, and yeah, I would I would do I would do bent grass. What would y'all do? I, I think bent is uh, bent is about as close to Bermuda as you'll get in the cool season grasses, right? So like in like what mm -hmm. you're saying about being addictive and just you know what it does and how it's different than, from everything else. Um, 
I suggested this to him earlier uh, on on the Discord. I said maybe because uh, one of the issues he had here, kind of leading into killing off the bluegrass, was that it just it was getting too dry. Like it wasn't so much it, it was kind of ramping up temperature wise. They were starting to touch ninety, but nineties don't bother bluegrass. It's just it's it's a very water hungry plant. And so I suggested you know tall fescue. Uh, now mm-hmm. the the rub here is that tall tall fescue is more drought tolerant, but uh, surprisingly, it's the biggest water user of all the cool season grasses. So that doesn't make sense, right? You're like, well, wait, how can it be drought tolerant, but it uses the most water? When you are giving it water, it will consume the most amount of water of any of the cool season grasses, right? But when you take water away, it will last longer, right, before entering dormancy to protect itself, right, than any of the cool season grasses. So some of its drought, not tolerance, but avoidance techniques are actually pretty interesting. And so I would just be curious of how it would do out there. And almost, I guess this Aldo is if you want to keep it pristine and looking tits, like I'd probably just go ahead and put the bent out there, water the envelope and piss out of it and, you know, get it going, make it look good. If you want to really yeah, like. Bent, bent has those moments of random death syndrome, though, you know, that just that make you and you're like, how did a hole a half inch deep? And 24 inches in diameter. Open up. Mm-hmm. It is, I am off a half inch. Now, every time I mow over it, I scalp it. And then I take another four inches off of, you know, expanding expanding the uh, uh, the cavity here. Uh, just f- further and further in diameter. And it is, it can make you or break you. Uh, bent grass has definitely broken me more than once. That's a prize yeah. fighter, though. If you, if you put water to it, if you let it dry down, uh, I mean, that's that's my favorite part about Bent, is that you can dry it down to holy hell and get water on it, and it will come right back. Just It'll come bounce right, back. right back. And you know and you know what? I will third on the Bent grass, and I'm imagining that, you know, with all those climate, he actually yeah. will do rather well with Bent, because to me, the enemy of bent grass is not so much temperature, but humidity. Humidity, yes. Humidity. I mean, and yeah. and that is where ninety five with ninety five percent humidity is what no is bueno. What broke me. No, no bueno. And then likewise, you all are talking Little about holes. Tur- holes turf type tall fescue. Uh I know that for him. He's going to do okay with turf type tall fescue, but I know or I heard about something about turf type tall fescue that makes it undesirable. Mm. It doesn't do well if it's hot at night. So uh, he, he'll do yeah. okay with it up until he starts getting those nights in the, in the Arizona border where the nighttime temperature is hovering about 90 degrees outside at night. Oh, that, 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 that'll that roast it. It'll be gone. That Yeah, he, he gets those. And, and likewise, I suspect that turf type tall fescue starts to struggle if you have nighttime temperatures over 80. And that's why I can't have it here in Hawaii either. Because I get a, a lot of nights at 80. Yeah, yeah it, never, it, it never did it well means, in Memphis. Ever, yeah, yeah, it, it, it couldn't, it couldn't deal with the warm weather uh, at night. Seventies borderline, sixties, yeah. Hey, cool. Fifties, awesome. But yeah, if you're because, like north of seventy six for a, a nighttime oh, fudge, low, that that, that rules out ho- that rules out Hawaii most of the year, and I know that that also rules out uh, Imperial Valley a lot of the year because it's actually warm at night over there. Yeah. Because of the desert, it gets hot. <laughs> Brent says, "What's the detriment of putting out pre-emergent with fertilizer in March in Massachusetts? Uh, when in March? March March is thirty days, so there's a there's a fairly significant window there. Uh, the the deal with it would be putting it down with fertilizer when the grass is not actively growing, right?" Uh, because if the mm-hmm. grass is not actively growing, fertilizer is uh, soluble, right? And so 
if your grass is not consuming the water uh, that is carrying the fertilizer that's dissolved in it, where is that water going? It could be, it could be going deep. It could be moving off site. So if it's actively consuming the water that has fertilizer dissolving in it, then you know where it's going. The majority of it's going to the plant. So then it's, it's of no, your, your risk mitigation is baked into the equation. However, if the grass is not growing, then your risk mitigation is exponentially, is, it, you're, it, it needs to be greater, right? You need to employ some some form of risk mitigation, and you would do that by applying pre-emergent sands fertilizer, if that makes sense. So your metric, your determining factor, your metric of when to apply on fertilizer should be dictated by the rate of growth of your grass. Is that, is that a fair assessment? Yep. Yeah. Agree. Wouldn't it be great if there was an app that told you how to do that and when to do that, though? Yeah. Huh. It's uh, like also, physics. You, <laughs> you know, uh, speaking of Friday, Friday, there's a big video drop coming. That is, it's going to be fun. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna drop that bomb out there. Did you hear that? that was a tomahawk missile? As a matter of fact, um, <laughs> hypersonic, straight from North Korea. <laughs> Hey, Thank don't you, say Sean, that. for protecting us, by the way. That was don't actually that. bringing down <laughs> hypersonic. It was just on the ground. He couldn't even get it off the ground. You know? <laughs> uh, Busy B says, with take all on Bermuda, what is your recommendation for a solution to fix that in the transition zone, South Carolina? Uh, with take all patch on Bermuda? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know on Bermuda. I mean, I could tell you on bent grass what to do for take all, but yeah, I I don't know if I have ever seen it. I have misidentified things of of ta as take all patch a lot, a lot, and it turned out it was not take all patch. So, uh, what would you recommend, Ray? We're gonna pawn this off on you. Okay. Uh, first of all. Uh... I would definitely look at my magnesium levels. I would look at my pH. And then finally, last step in this equation is I would also look at my fertility program overall. And then finally, fungicides. Yeah, uh, in in terms of fungicides, typically what I would do would be uh, roll my own heritage, uh, not not a heritage, uh, uh, what is it, headway, and headway uh, G, yeah, yeah, like mm -hmm. a headway or uh, actually my my roll my own was uh, uh, I used to use a lot of either Balaton or thirty three thirty six. Here's the, the other thing is that typically you're going to see take all patch in higher pH soils. Uh, and you, you do not have higher pH soils, busy bees. So if I had to guess what you are seeing is either going to be spring dead spot or uh, winter kill. Uh, because we did have the ice storm this year. And I think a lot of people are going to forget that happened because it seems like forever ago. Uh, but we had really really single digit cold weather uh, either during a period of rain or after a period of rain, lots of ice sheeting that occurred in areas of the Southeast. Even if you didn't have necessarily just ice accumulation on trees, it doesn't mean that it didn't accumulate in low spots and in, in, in the soil. And, uh, and that can be one of the big factors for um, uh, uh, winter kill. So just, Keep that in the back of your mind. I, I genuinely do not think right now. I would I would I would I would go out on a limb here, and I'm going to guess with 99% confidence that right now, where you are in South Carolina, would you be seeing take all patch? If it was July, I'd say that's more probable. But right now, no, either a spring dead spot or winter kill. Um, and, but the the great thing is is that with both of those. 
you really don't have to do shit except, except let it grow in. You don't have to apply anything. You can't apply anything at this point. I mean, you can, but it's not, it's not going to help you with shit. Uh, it's literally just a waste of money to do it. So, uh, save the dollars and let it get a little bit warmer and, uh, and spend it on fertilizer to grow it in, which is going to be a hell of a lot cheaper than trying to, uh, uh, fungicide away something that's already happened and is no longer active. So, yeah, hope hope that helps. Uh, is anyone ready for the cicada apocalypse? How to deal with this situation? I, I, you, yes, I'm ready for it. How to deal with it? Permethrin will probably knock them out. Is there is there anything you would go? Are you are you investing in orthene right now, Ray? Do you do you hold you know a hundred thousand shares of orthene? Nope. I mean, I kind of avoid <laughs> orthene as much as possible. I mean, right oh, now, come on. it's last resort for, you know, landscape use. But then I still have it for my nursery and greenhouse customers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, because I will blast their, their crops with, uh, you know, orthene and uh, orthene plus abamectin. I'll do that all day long. But, That's a good one. The other thing is, is that with the cicadas, I believe the other thing that can be used on cicadas is chlorantranilipril. Oh, I did not know that. Okay, because here's like a little thing for people to put in the back of their head. A lot of the leaf feeding insects on shrubs and trees are susceptible to chlorantranilipril applied at two to four ounces per hundred gallons of spray. Interesting. And, no, and that will even do a job on, like, Japanese beetle. It will actually take out Japanese beetle on trees and shrubs. I'm talking about the adult beetles. They get into the... Uh, a solar print on the leaves, and next thing you know, they're on the ground with their exoskeletons dissolving. So <laughs> that's just another option because I know people say, oh, let's use carbaryl, or my least favorite one is let's use safari or merit. Uh, I catch anybody doing merit or safari as a foliar spray. Yeah. I will consider amputation of hands or feet. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> okay, don't do that. <laughs> it is so silly to use Safari as a foliar spray. That is, I mean, that is legitimately silly as hell. Um, Stupid, Dana isn't Long, it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Dana Lawman said, what other herbicides have both a pre and post effect aside from sulfentrazone and atrazine? Uh, simazine would be on that list. Uh, metribuzin to some extent would be on that list. Uh, tenacity would be on that list. Uh, most of your, most of your SUs, Matt, most of your SUs yeah. are also kind of, kind of there too. And then. So other like one, metsulfuron, uh, trifloxysulfuron, uh, uh, yes. Sulfosulfuron. Sulfosulfuron. Iota sulfuron. Chlorosulfuron. Ugh. Chlorosulfuron, Matt. I know. I just. Danger. Danger. I mean. <laughs> I you, you're probably not going to be able to buy it anyway, so. No. Uh, no. Princess, real quick, said Dithiapir. Dithiapir is not. And let, let me explain why, Princess. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing this to, to, uh, to pick a fight with you, but Bang. there Bang. is a very, very, very narrow window that you will see yeah. a degree of efficacy when dithiapir is applied as a liquid with a surfactant. Mm -hmm. And we are talking about the one and two tiller stage. The, if you do not have a trained eye, an absolute trained eye, and I'm saying like to the point that you are peeking, you were able to peek through canopies because of your x-ray vision, 99.9% .9 of the population is going to have a really hard time identifying uh, crabgrass in a one to two tiller stage. You're not going to know what it is. You're, You're probably you not going to know what's up. Exactly. 
90 percent of the time you will 95 percent of the time you won't know it's up and if you do see it in a bear area or something you're not going to be sure what kind of seedling you're looking at is just a a small fraction of a leaf is budding out of the ground okay so i'm not i'm not saying you're necessarily wrong but it is such a narrow window of application that it's really hard for me to to say that that has uh, a post-emergent effect uh, Quinn Clorac, I don't know if, if I would say has necessarily a pre effect, um, when combined with another pre, it just, man, I don't know. I don't, what I, what I do like about it is, is like the dual somewhat dual mode of action when it comes to, uh, uh, we control, right. You know, because you do get that phenoxy like effect out of it. Um, and then you you know you can induce you know senescence of certain grasses. However, in terms I, in terms of a residual ray, how how would you rate that? And I'm genuinely asking because I I don't know I can't. It's normally can't. good for at least thirty to forty five days okay. when you apply. That's better than I would think. You know, it's thirty to forty five days, but then the reason why most people don't see quinclorac as a as a pre-emergent is because they're relegating that to a spot spray on crabgrass that has already gotten too big for, say, even dithiopyr. Yes. But yes. if somebody has the wherewithal to apply label rate of quinclorac to an entire turf area, you are getting significant pre-effect. And it's to the point where I often suggest to people that have situations where they have seeded turf, they need a pre, but then their turf is too young for conventional prodiamine or other. I say, okay, this year, let's do tenacity plus quinclorac, and that will get you out of spring crabgrass emergent and clean up a lot of your weeds. You may throw in triclopyr in that mix and really clean up your recently planted lawn and uh, call it good for the year. I mean, that's that's just where quinclorac has its usages. But then otherwise, it doesn't have the longevity that prodiamine would. I mean, it's only about 30 to 45 days. I mean, that's it. That's all you get out of it. And so it's good. but then. At the same time, it doesn't have the longevity. So you just keep that in mind if you're going to use it. And I normally wouldn't suggest sub subbing it for a conventional pre unless you're in that special situation where you just seeded your turf and your turf is too young to take something like a full rate of prodiamine, if that answers the uh question. <laughs> It does. And it parlays into the next one. Well, Gordon asks, he's in Dallas, has a Bermuda lawn. Part of the lawn is dirt. And I'm trying to encourage the Bermuda to spread through low cuts. Uh, does pre emergent have any effect on lateral spread of Bermuda? Yes. Uh, but uh, hang on. Let me, let me be a little bit clear on this. So I know there are some studies that have actually done one of those things where they are looking at uh, actual shoot growth that develops. And there is a certain degree of suppression there. <laughs> Oh, Lord have mercy, COVID. Um, however, but <laughs> there is a a risk to reward ratio that that you are undergoing here. And in my opinion, uh, and, and uh, oh, and let me let me make this point too: is that a lot of the times you can develop runners, and then the runners won't tack down due to the clubbing of roots, which is an issue in and of itself, right? So you kind of have a dual a dual effect on uh, negatively impacting impacting Bermuda to, to grow into bear areas. However, if you are using rates uh, that are not max label rates, the likelihood of that creating such a problem for you is going to be, is going to decline as your rate declines, right? You're mowing low. I don't know how low you're going. As you start dropping below an inch, you got to start thinking about just how much in rate reduction you have to go. And so what I would start doing is then paying attention to the part of the label that talks about fairway usage. Okay. 
uh, or uh, or even a lower height of cut, right? Because because you're you're treating it differently. It's, even though yes, it's a home lawn, you don't necessarily follow that same guideline because you're dealing <laughs> with half inch Bermuda, or three quarters of an inch Bermuda, or eight tenths of an inch Bermuda, not uh, uh, not you know three inch Bermuda like you see in, in probably a lot of your neighbors' homes there, Gordon. So. But the short answer is that, yes, it does. However, in this particular instance, it would be, in my opinion, unless you're trying to fill in like 40,000 square feet uh, of grass, uh, uh, even even then, I would I would use prodiamine and uh, and just be patient with the time it takes to grow in instead of having to be out there chasing your ass on trying to kill everything that ends up all your lespediza and all the other bullshit that's going to show up in the, in the bare areas. Uh, so I got another one for you. What's that? I got another one for you. You know, when you're talking about trying to get Bermuda to fill in, Mm -hmm. what I find that is not harmful to low cut Bermuda is pound per acre Simazine. That is not harmful. That's a good one too. However, However, you had better be dead nuts on regarding your application <laughs> and calibration because yeah. here's the problem with simazine. If you make a mistake with simazine, you may need to live with Uh-oh. that mistake for 60 for 60 to 90 days and at some point in time simazine becomes a bare ground herbicide because you know in the old days they used to give you 10 to 50 pound per acre rates for things like railroad tracks and fence lines <laughs> to where basically nothing grows there. It's, it's dirt. But I can also concur with you on the prodiamine in that I find that the lowest rates of prodiamine applied as a split do not negatively affect tack down and growth of Bermuda. In fact, if you look at the barricade label, it'll tell you you may use the lowest rates of the barricade or prodiamine during sprig establishment yep. in Bermuda. You may do it. And you know what, Matt? I did it. And for me, that was a heck of a lot better than having to live with crabgrass and goosegrass during growing. That was a lot better. I mean, <laughs> I'll take that over having to deal with all of that garbage. So that's Man, one. And then the y- goose grass. It would, it would yeah. End, it, yeah. No. no. You, Not even once. You. Not even Fuck, once. No. Uh, uh, hell no. Because you see, I still remember having to rescue three acres of park that had Bermuda established six months ago. The guy didn't use pre emergent. And so I basically had to use his area as a beta test for a, (laughs) yeah, uh, Jim Brosnan is going to like this, a Pilex and Syncor app. Yep. (laughs) I was going to, that's what I was just about to say is that uh, the only way your only way back through that is straight through the gates of hell and all the way out the back door. And, (laughs) and, uh, you know, it's a real man's burn of return. It is, it is no joke. The pilots yeah. on Bermuda is enough to to make you second guess a Sincor. lot of decisions you made in your life. Yeah, add Sincor on top Sincor. of it, and it's just, and then you hate yourself. Uh, hey, that's, hey, that guys, is one of the ones that that you know, scares me. About three it. weeks. Only about three weeks. Yeah, yeah. And hey, then, I, 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 yeah, I I have a five pound bottle of Sincor DF on my truck right now. Okay. <laughs> It, it takes me back to the time when I remember <laughs> spraying, uh, you know, the, the old, uh, uh, whatever, whatever it was you got, you got from Coke, the, uh, the 30 with, uh, with methylene urea and a tank tank mix that with, you know, four ounces per thousand MSMA, just go blanket spray everything in Memphis. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and boy, Wow, everything was orange from outer space, and you were just like, "Holy shit, what have I done?" And uh, it was a little, a little different than than the golf course days. And I was like, "Man, is it? Am I doing something illegal here? Like, this is everything I sprayed last week is so orange." 
I feel like I did something gee. wrong. Uh, well, gee, Matt, I mean, that, could, that couldn't be any worse than my 1990s uh, cleanup mix on Bermuda and Zoisha. Couldn't be worse than that. I mean, that Which was the. I'm, I'm going to guess image, uh, Simazine, and, uh, and MSMA. And MSMA and Banville. <laughs> <laughs> Please, God, no one that's listening to this do that. It, it, like, it, Ray caveated that with the 1990s cleanup, okay? Don't, don't go do that. It's not worth it. There are better options out there. Like, swear to God, Pilex and, uh, and Syncor, Metribuzin is going to be way more fun for you than than even trying to chase down all of that and uh and then potentially have your ass handed to you uh kevin yep. peter said having the neighborhood kids over for an easter egg hunt in southeast michigan wish it wasn't 30 so i could show off some stripes but holding on the first mo man it's probably not a bad idea but god man the timing of that southeast michigan is still still not chooching yet man dude the tall fescue here is just blowing out of the ground you know we we should have we should have cut like probably three weeks ago at my office, but we just had it cut this week and man, it was, it was gnarly. I mean, I bet the, the grass was eight inches tall. It was ridiculous. Uh, Nick said, is there any bent grass in Hawaii? That's a silly ass question. Nick, you know, the answer to that. Actually, there is, there is, yes. you see, yes, there, there is. are upper elevation courses on Maui and the big Island that do have bent greens, but I've seen them on TV. Those guys, they're in hell because you see up got there, you know, up there, it is literally cool enough for Poa Annua to be invasive, but not hot enough to kill the freaking Poa. So those golf guys like Pennsylvania are in abs- and Columbus, Ohio. Are, in abs- are in absolute hell. And because they have bent grass, they can't do what I typically would do to Poa Annua. Yeah, you can't you can't bust out the revolver or katana or whatever else on it. Who said who said I'm talking about that? Because like the last time I had Poa show up on a golf situation, like this was on a on a teaching tee. That teaching tee got spectacle followed course, by yeah. tenacity and sencor. Oh. <laughs> That's a pretty, that's a pretty lit mix too. I was hoping you, I was hoping you were going to say Corsair. I keep digging into the, in the old Riverdale. Uh, Jesse said my my ass hasn't even grown yet in Massachusetts. I mean grass. I'm not surprised. Do you know why? Uh, it's it's because you need again. You need to have a good talking to it. Like I, I advised Ray earlier. Uh, Johnny Fescue, my man in Nash, Vegas. Uh, how how are the how are the the uh, the casinos doing in Vegas? At, Nash Vegas right now. Uh Johnny, <laughs> also Johnny, did you find the the uh the fraternity brother who disappeared potentially into the in the river? Do you got any inside oh, baseball no. on that? I'm I'm just I'm curious. I keep reading it in the news. It's all over the news right now. Uh is a celebrant oh, off patent this year. Now, I saw the FMC product, wonder if generics are available yet. Do y'all have any insight? I I was thinking it was next year, but I but my years are no, so running year. together right now. It is this year. So the rent is I don't, yeah. yeah, I don't, maybe, maybe we'll start seeing it under Qualipro or, uh, prime source select maybe this fall for, uh, um, uh, early order. I don't know. I, I don't know who else is going to come out with it. Obviously FMC was first to market with their product, but, uh, same active, um, higher AI load. So the rates are lower, but, uh, pricing's pretty favorable. So. You know, if you're into that, check it out. Uh, Lavendi said, how many bags of 18 pound Anderson 648 <laughs> do I need on my St. Og turf in Northeast Florida? 35. How many bees <laughs> are at the end of Chad? <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll say don't do it. Not even once. How about, how about them apples? Uh, Beast Mode said, where do you recommend getting a soil test done? I'm in North Carolina and have only done the soil, the my soil, but after seeing you guys discuss any more of an accurate test, don't take our word for it. Go watch tur- uh, Turfgrass Epistemology, uh, Dr. Travis Shaddix. Uh, he actually did a very in-depth review of, uh, of the my soil uh, test, and it's way more scientific than a lot of the insults we hurl. Uh, his at least sound like they have class uh, because they do have class. <laughs> 
we don't and it's okay again he's a turf grass researcher we're we're like we're the grunts in the field so we don't we don't carry a lot of class a lot of pizzazz but not class um mm. but as far as a uh, a place to get it done there's a sh metric shit ton of them and what again you know as he recommended mail of three is probably the the most accurate that we have in terms of uh calibrating tests to, to nutrient levels uh, so you could do Midwest, uh, you can do Waters, you can do Spectrum, uh, you can do, uh, who else? Brook, Brookside. Uh, Waypoint. Uh, and Waypoint, Waypoint is good too. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Nor has kits on his website at ryanorlawncare.com. That's a mail-in Malik 3 uh, where you actually just submit a sample <laughs> and not, you, don't, you don't have to put it in a jar of water uh, because that creates hydrolysis issues in and of itself. So anyway, there's a lot, a lot of places that you can have it done. But uh, again, you do, you want to stay away from the uh, ion ex exchange resin capsule. So I said this the first year I did not put down uh, potassium in the fall. In the first year I don't have pink snow mold. I didn't even use Zimplar this past fall. Funny you're seeing that correlation because uh, there is uh, data that demonstrates the same thing with uh, uh, with uh, bent grass and and potassium mm -hmm. applications in the fall and increased instances of uh, pink snow mold. If you're running into pink snow mold, uh, try holding off potassium in the fall and see if it helps you as well. Uh, Totter said, can you dissolve merit and water to apply around the trunks of birch trees to combat Japanese beetles instead of foliar? 100%. And you will be way happier with the result, I promise you. Um, it's probably easier to get it in a liquid formulation than in, uh, the, the dry flowable, but, um, the, uh, the, the suspended concentrate and, you know, there are going to be, uh, root, uh, basal root, uh, application rates on the label. There's, I've actually seen a couple of fairly decent explanation videos on YouTube on how to do it too, where you mix in a bucket and then drench. Uh, at the at the base of the root system, and it, I have an even better like idea for it. It's on crepe myrtles. I mean, it's yes. Please, God, I have that. an even better. I have an even better idea, Matt. What if you mm -hmm. were to go around this tree, auger into the soil in, in this inside of the drip line all around the tree, like maybe make four to eight holes, you know, evenly spaced around that trunk, and then pour that mix down those holes and then cover it back up. And the reason why I'm a fan of putting imidacloprid subsurface like that is I have concerns about unprotected persons and animals touching that imidacloprid residue on the soil. I mean, I always have to safeguard, you know, regarding that. And also, if you have that thing down that hole, that is that much less distance for that active ingredient to travel to get to the root system of the tree. Because, you know, for me, I typically apply my imidacloprid through a 12-inch long needle. And that needle uh -huh. is, is inserted about six inches. And that needle is targeted at the root system of the tree, all the way around the trunk. And what I find is that by applying that way, I get activity that I can see in the plants within two to four weeks. I see that it has gone up, and you know how I can tell it's gone up? Leaf-eating beetles are suddenly frozen on the leaf of that tree. <laughs> okay like the first time i saw that was on my rose bushes where the beetles were stuck there frozen on the damned leaf and normally these bastards come out skeletonize the leaf in the middle of the night and then go back into hiding in the morning but no they bit and they're still there the next morning it's like Sorry, sucks to be you. <laughs> the um, uh, the <laughs> next two here are for uh, Demay, a uh, Tara Dan said Ryan liked my post today, so that's pretty cool. Congratulations! I actually like that name, wow. Tara Dan. Uh, and then Mitch Bird said, "What turf organization would you recommend joining in Ohio?" Oh, he's, uh, oh, that's the question. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, 
Oh, definitely the e. the uh, the Ohio Turfgrass yeah. Foundation. Uh, by far the, I would say the leading organization for professional development, um, education, and also on the front of like uh, lobbying efforts and uh, um, outreach. You know, so trying to get things a little bit more favorable for the business owners in our state and you know whether it's golf courses or lawn care or sports turf whatever uh definitely would would check them out so shameless plug i sounded like ron henry there for a minute kind of felt icky <laughs> but i uh, know a, a damn good organization so uh so i can find this real quick before uh yeah here we go here we go i'm gonna pimp this for a minute and let me do this and this I guess we're gonna dox Dan, Tara Dan here real quick, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> People can find them. Go put that up there, J Pink. There's Dan. Tara Dan. Hi, Dan. Even yeah, even with these hey, cooler temperatures, the first good. application has started to kick kick in. Call today to get on our route. If you don't call in, if you're in the greater Cincinnati area, you don't call Tara Dan. Uh, you're not going to be our friend anymore. You're, you're probably an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> we're, we're you know what? That could be that. That what? That's right. Right there, Dan. We just gave you a sales lesson. The first, the first objection you hear from the customer that calls in, that's the answer. Now you know you're probably an asshole. I have to, <laughs> you know, I have to explain this to you in smaller words, you know, shorter sentences. But let me do that. Or you do. Just for you. You could give them. Do the I need to break out the crayon? Do you want to die yeah, today? <laughs> With a straight face. Oh, hey! Thank you for inquiring. I left the quote on your door. Do you want to die today? Um. <laughs> no. I noticed the look on your wife's face. It looks like she's not getting laid. Something I can do for you? <laughs> that's only Ooh. if you go. To that's that's only if you go to Ferg's house, though. <sighs> Oh man, I mean, I it was the... let's see. I mean, does I mean does, Wait, does she is... like her guys short, short and dark? Uh, well, that's, that's, only <laughs> she, that's only a Sheila's place. <laughs> Sheila, I don't know, Ray. I think the long girl does too. What, there's, whoever that there's chick on the Instagram is. <laughs> there's a lot of Jesus in that house, but I bet you could take her to church, Ray, if you had a chance. So. Hallelujah. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Busy Bees Lawn Service said, how much doc juice do I need to be insane? Any. Uh, there's there's no lower any. limit there. Any, any no qualifies as insanity. Uh, Ch Chuck said, yeah, just curious if Ray would care to share his recommendation on premium and landscape bedding areas. Uh, Ooh, Ray, what is... Ray on what is I got I gotta, yeah. I got one for Ray on this one, too. You go first. We, we both did. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, what is the snapshot, uh, the one that has the uh, the preventative for uh, nut sedge in it? Uh, it's, that's called, it, it has, called freehand. That's freehand. called freehand. Right. I was drawing a blank on that the other day. All right, go ahead with your However, However, in most cases, I prefer to you know stage my pre-emergent applications in landscape beds as following is that my foundational is always going to be either prodiamine plus isoxabin as a directed spray around the plant material not over which the is top also gallery which is also like gallery uh or in alternate years i like a hot mix of Shoreguard and Spectacle. Ooh. That's my year one is Prodiamine plus Isoxabin. Year two, I flip over to Spectacle and Shoreguard. And then you were asking about Freehand. Okay. Freehand supposedly has some effect on Nutsedge. Supposedly. However, However, my preferred in a landscape bed, should I see nut sedge appearing, is I subject it to three applications of four ounce per acre sulfentrazone as a directed spray around the plant material. And oh, by the way, I'd like to caution the listeners, please do not apply sulfonylurea nut sedge herbicides in your landscape areas. Please don't. Keep keep the monument out of your beds. 
They would. Yeah, please don't. Uh, I mean, because I've well. seen people do some bad things applying certainty or monument in their landscape areas. The plants did not appreciate it. Let's just put it, leave it at that. <laughs> Let's just leave um, it at that. So there. <laughs> all right. Two, two things I want to get your take on here real quick. Because uh, mm-hmm. listen, it's part of why we do this is, uh, you know, we all learn, right? If we mm-hmm. just, you know, we'll be a courageous <laughs> enough to ask the question and then shut the fuck up and listen. Um, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take some of my own advice here one of All those right. i'm not right. good at <laughs> well yeah. none of it maybe both none of that maybe both um you know who's not great at it on both accounts ron henry that's a completely different conversation go back oh, and watch one of that's a videos. different story right uh, there that's a different deal <laughs> now with that being said all right uh first for a question what do you think mm-hmm. about the product crew because i I, I, I'm, this is getting pushed really, really hard. It's prodiamine. And it is the whole thing is, well, you can apply it right over top of the turf and the bed and you don't have to worry about where it goes and this and that. And I'm a little skeptical on okay. miracle I, product. I, so am I, am I being too I believe, harsh? Yes, you are. You're, you're actually, you're not being harsh because crew is, I think, Dizio Pier and Isoxabin. And uh, do you know where? I think it's Dizio Pier and Isoxabin, but okay. oh, it is. Is it? This? Okay, okay, wait. Okay, hang on, guys, because you know what my bang on Dizio Pier and landscape areas is? Huh? It doesn't last like how Prodiamine would. Yes. Yes. Okay, mm-hmm. because here's what here's what's probably going to happen if somebody were to like do crew. They would have pretty good control of their broadleaf weeds for the first. Uh, two to three months and then mm-hmm. by day 45 the dizio pier will break and they're going to start to see things like foxtail crabgrass and goosegrass come out in their landscape beds and somebody's not going to be happy where that's kind of why my preference for grassy weed herbicides in a landscape area are as follow i like prodiamine i like spectacle provided the plants are tolerant. And then there's a third one that I like that is hard to get nowadays, Orizolin, Surfland. Oh, man, Surfland. Yeah, Surfland AS. Yeah, Yeah. I I like that one because Surfland AS lasted. But then here's the problem with Surfland. Apparently, making Surfland involves nitration. Mm Mm-hmm. And United I, Phosphorus has issues keeping the factory that nitrates intact. Mm, <laughs> mm. Sorry. I, uh, <laughs> I, no, no lie. I cracked open a new bottle. This is 2003 or four. Uh, I was doing just mm-hmm. that. I was using it landscape beds. Cracked open a mm-hmm. brand new two and a half and started filling like a eight ounce mixing cup to pour it into mm-hmm. a backpack. I dropped mm-hmm. that whole goddamn two and a half right on the ground <laughs> in the camera of the golf course Awful. It, looked like, it it looked like an orange blooded murder scene in there it was <laughs> so bad i will awful know. oh god uh, if well. you know you know and then uh, i'll tell you the, the best part oh, okay never mind go on no you okay. go ahead you go ahead <laughs> go oh, ahead literally the best part of the, literally the best part of the story so this is like this is like right right after lunch you know mm-hmm. uh we get a call from the golf course down the street hey pesticide inspector just showed up to our place might be coming down to your place next just letting you know <laughs> I, I come in i i had literally come in like three minutes before that to be like hey listen we got a real problem out here so like literally it's like one o'clock in the afternoon it's like june probably should have stuck around because you know it was roasting everybody went home for the day they just sent everybody home we locked up the fucking shop and just left the uh, homeboy, yeah. the homeboy showed up like, yeah oh jeez nobody here oh i just guess i'll come Nobody back here. tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> or next week or or whatever yeah but but man ryan i mean that 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 that's a close one because my experiences mm. with surfland are that was the one that i like to give to guys 
that are sloppy in their handling. Yeah, you'll know. Yeah, okay, it shows. Yeah, yeah because then I say, yeah, you, you've got all this orange stuff all over your hands, all over your feet, and it's like your shoes are stained orange. Where are your Kim resistant boots? I mean, it gets mm. uh, it gets like that because <laughs> Surfland will tell on sloppy handling. Uh, the For last sure. one here, Michael Robertson said, mm. I was at TPC Sawgrass this weekend and was intrigued about the look and texture of the rough. Looked at their website. They said it was overseed with championship fine ryegrass. Uh, have you used this type of seed? Where can it be purchased for next fall, winter overseeding? Uh, I wonder if uh, they're talking about be... championship fine or championship GQ. It's No, it's not champion GQ. So mm. championship fine, they use it a lot in sports turf market. Oh, it's, um, champion fine. It's champion fine. 50, it's it, I don't know if it's fifty fifty. I don't know what the seed tag says. Uh, it's probably not fifty fifty, but it's uh, fine fescue and perennial ryegrass, and so uh, it's a chewings fescue. And the idea is is that the chewings can germinate at lower temperatures. So uh, if you're in a situation where you know, like in the NFL, you know they're they're throwing out overseed constantly, you know, late in the season just in these Bermuda grass fields, sometimes they're tarp and sometimes they're not. And that chewings will germinate, you know, at lower soil temperatures, like almost all the way down to 40. So you get that Whoa. coming up as a nurse grass and you'll get your, um, you'll get the uh, perennial ryegrass up just after it. So it, it kind of helps as a, as a nurse grass or a nurse crop to come in and help. But that uh, the, the big thing that uh, for a golf course rough, I guess I've never seen it in that application, but that, uh, chewing is, has a much more upright texture, right? It's not real floppy like that ryegrass will be. So it's probably what you saw um, in terms of texture, right? The difference in texture and everything like that. And I don't know how, I'm sure they, uh, SRO is very good about um, matching cultivar color and texture really, really well. Not that other seed companies aren't, but I always thought that was one thing that SRO was good at was, you know, really making something look and feel um very very uh consistent so uh if you want to buy something right. like that just find who sells sro uh in in your area and they should be able to get you a bag i mean basically what they're going to do is just say hey next time you have a truck coming from oregon with you know your sro stuff have them throw a bag on for me and you'll have to buy 50 pounds it'll probably be absurdly expensive it'll probably be you know five six bucks a pound and a 50 pound bag so as long as you're prepared to pay that go for it but it's going to be a um like a typical ryegrass overseed rate or pretty close to it. it's probably going to be you know upwards of six pounds as high as 10 um maybe settled somewhere in the middle there if you're going bare ground if you're going to overseed that cut that rate by like uh 30 40 percent it'd be pretty good uh yeah. Uh, we are going to dip out of here. We're going to go hang out with our patrons and do our after show. Uh, it's, uh, mind you that we, it's rough over there. It is what it is, but, uh, it's actually a good time because it's, it's actually, you're going to be there. invited into a, a community <laughs> of people who do have a genuine interest in learning. Uh, Nick Hanksor and Tyler Hollifield, you are pinned to the top of our messages for next week. Johnny Fescue, why can't they do that? It's the sheer volume of, uh, I'm sorry, the sheer mass of prodiamine that you have to suspend, right? So. When you're talking about you know suspending 40 percent active ingredient in it you know that's why uh your concentration know why. your percent use dilution is going to be very much harder to hold in it without it uh settling out i know why matt it's because mm. manufacturers have gone away from emulsifiable concentrates that most too. of them have gone away from that because i could imagine Cost prohibitive no not only that just nasty because if this question were asked 30 years ago or 40 years ago, that prodiamine would probably be dissolved in ethylbenzene or xylene and emulsified. However, no big deal there. However, you know, you know what? I don't miss all of those flammable and stinky emulsifiable concentrates. I don't miss them because I come from the time when a lot of your turf herbicides and uh, insecticides were emulsifiable concentrates and talk about a shitty time because the solvents were smelly and flammable. 
it would you know, have made so me smoking cigarettes while mixing uh, mixing just a, a bad day. So thankfully, I don't smoke cigarettes anymore. All right, we're getting out of here. We're going to go hang out over with the uh, with the pages. Patreon.com forward slash burner return if you want to do so. Uh, and if you don't, no harm, no foul. We'll see you next week. You'll have a good one. But. <laughs>